Here are the top five craziest items in Dungeons & Dragons. First up, we have the Ruin Stone. This is a little palm-sized stone that can be found in the adventure Divine Contention, which is an extension of the Essentials Kit. It's an evil artifact that was crafted by Netherese wizards, which surprises no one. Each day, a villain can use their bonus action to undo one deed that they've performed in exchange for a random person they know being erased from reality. There's a 75% chance that one of the villain's allies will disintegrate and a 25% chance that one of the player characters will disintegrate. Assuming that the villain has a lot of disposable henchmen, this is a pretty sweet deal for any evil mastermind. The item's description tries to temper the Ruin Stone's implications by admitting that its effects are pretty broad, and then it goes on to tell you how you can use it in combat. But that's freaking lame, so I said go wild with it and make this damn thing the whole center of an adventure plot. Imagine a campaign set against the backdrop of an epic war between good and evil. A dark lord is trying to overthrow the kingdom, and in a massive and climactic battle, the kingdom's troops and the villains clash together, deciding the tide of the entire war. The Dark Lord's troops are, of course, soundly defeated, and it seems like the good guys have won. Everybody celebrates. Hooray! The next morning, your characters wake up and find the jovial atmosphere a little subdued. Apparently, the victory wasn't as amazing as it could have been, and strangely, some of the people that they've celebrated with yesterday are reported as casualties. Only the characters remember the previous day's joviality, and they find the new reports a bit at odds with their memories. The next day, every face in the kingdom is drawn and haggard. Apparently, the kingdom's victory against the Dark Lord was Pyrrhic, with reports that almost every soldier died maintaining the kingdom's foothold. You see, the Dark Lord has the Ruin Stone and is using it to undo certain strategic decisions. If many more days go by, the Dark Lord's victory may be assured unless your characters can figure out what's going on and put a stop to it. Today's video is brought to you by Libris Nocturnum, my latest Kickstarter campaign. This book contains 13 adventures that will take your characters from level 0 to level 12 and comes with over 30 new monsters that will hunt, haunt, and terrorize them across the land and into the Nightmare Realm. It also comes with full Foundry virtual tabletop support with maps created by the incomparable DM Andy. The adventures in this book are already done and written. We just need to make it hauntingly gorgeous. The more money we raise, the more original handmade art I can put into this book. I love employing human artists, especially in this age of AI-generated art, and I'm going to need your help to do that. We're launching on March 15th, and I really want to see you all turn out for this one. We've got great perks and stretch goals lined up, so use the Kickstarter link down below or go to 5ehorror.com to learn more and get one of the book's adventures for free. That being said, let's check out our next crazy item. Do you remember in cartoons where a character would pull up a small gun and then a bigger gun would fold out of it and then a cannon out of that and then a missile out of that and so on? Yeah, that's kind of like the Axe of the Dorvish Lords, which we find in the Dungeon Master's Guide. It slices, it dices, it makes Julian fries. This thing is so badass that it has the properties of three other items rolled into it. A belt of dwarven kind, a dwarven thrower, and a sword of sharpness. That means you increase your constitution score by up to two to a max of 20, you gain advantage on charisma checks against dwarves, you gain advantage on saves against poison and resistance to poison, dark vision out to 60 feet, you can read, write, and speak dwarvish, you can throw the axe like it's freaking Mjolnir, use it as a flashlight, deal a buttload of extra damage, and lop off body parts with it. And that's just if you're not a dwarf. If you are, then you're immune to poison damage. You increase your dark vision by 60 feet, and you gain proficiency in tools relating to smithing, stonemasonry, and brewing. To top it all off, you can summon an earth elemental once per day, and every three days, you can teleport to a point underground without worrying about, you know, teleporting into the middle of a rock. On the flip side, if you're not a dwarf, you start to look like one over a seven day period. Now, you don't actually become a dwarf or get any of the benefits of being a dwarf, you just get shorter and hairier, and for all the benefits of that weapon, I'd say that's a pretty good trade-off. Holy shit snacks, this item from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is bonkers. So Rayo is the Greyhawk god of peace. His crook 
carries with it the ability to banish fiends from the material plane and send them back to where they came from for a hundred years. Through the ages, the crook has traded hands from one adventurer to another, it was lost and found again, yada yada yada. Eventually, it was involved in a battle against the Witch Queen, Tasha, and with the help of the crook, Tasha's army was defeated, but not before she cursed the crook and its magical matrix. The result of this curse gives a 10% chance that instead of banishing fiends from the material plane, the crook will open a 50 foot wide permanent portal which spits out all of the fiends the crook has ever banished. The crook has banished so many fiends that it takes 18 years for them all to crawl out of the portal. At the speed of one per round, that's every six seconds, that's 10 fiends per minute, 600 fiends per year, 14,400 fiends per day, 5,256,000 fiends per year, making a grand total of 94,608,000 fiends released onto the material plane. And if any of those are alkaliths, which I'm sure some of them are, they'll open up even more portals to let more fiends in. So yeah, hell on earth. Nothing like trying to banish the hordes of hell only to bust the doors wide open and bring about the apocalypse. There's an artist in all of us. If you can write your name, you can paint. Or at least that's what my seventh grade art teacher said. Thanks for believing at us, Mr. Ferguson. If you want your players to break your game, but you don't want to give them the deck of many things, give them Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments from the Dungeon Master's Guide instead. Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments is a box of paints that contains enough pigment to cover a thousand square feet. Any object or landscape features that players paint with these pigments becomes real, so long as it's an item valued at less than 25 gold pieces. Now, if you didn't know, there's a lot of things that are valued at less than 25 gold pieces. Frustrated by a puzzle and want to leave the room? Paint a door on the wall and move on. Can't get into a lock trunk? Paint a hole inside of it. Going into a frozen wasteland? Paint some cold weather clothing. It's basically scribble knots meets Dungeons and Dragons. So the next time you need a giant key shaped like a lizard or a bunch of platinum pieces or a hole in the ground, all you have to do is break out your little box of paints and the problem is solved. Here's another one from Tasha's that's great for aspiring dentists everywhere. Once upon a time, there was a cleric named Dalvol Nar. One day, he came into possession of a bag of assorted teeth, either by stealing it from a red dragon or getting the teeth from very powerful beings. Which story is true is anybody's guess, and it doesn't really matter. What matters is the fact that there are 20 teeth, and each one has a really powerful magical effect. With each tooth, you have a choice. You can either plant the tooth in the ground or a body of water to summon some creature, which is great if you need the help of an adult red dracolich or just want to summon a Tarrasque for 24 seconds, or you can put it into your own mouth or it'll take the place of an existing tooth. You can implant a number of teeth equal to your constitution modifier plus one and simultaneously gain the benefits of each implanted tooth. Want to cast Revivify eight times? There's a cat's molar. Need plus two to your AC? Implant a lizard folk fang. Want to pretend to be a unicorn and heal your allies? There's a rainbow painted donkey molar for you. Now, 5e ignores this bit, but the fate of Dalvolnar wasn't great. In 3.5, he came back looking like something out of Hellraiser, a man made out of pink gum flesh, covered in teeth, and a bloody toothless maw for a mouth. I kind of like to call him the Tooth Fairy. You can find a little Easter egg of Dalvolnar as a vestige in the Amber Temple in Curse of Strahd where you can get the ability to resurrect three times, but you lose all of your teeth. And speaking of Curse of Strahd, I've got a whole playlist on the subject for you to check out. If you want to step up your game, check that out and definitely head over to Kickstarter and check out Libris Nocturnum.